As a captain of a rugby team and a fleet of battleships, you can be a hill lead heroes to a better tomorrow. Always with the pinpoint strategies of scoring or destroying, you should count on him to see it, plan around it, and then execute it. He's been training in the arts of being that last man standing since he could stand. Backed by a family with deep history rooted in heroism, was only right he will follow suit. On battlefields looking like a golem of justice, often in shadows being darker than a phantom. Either way, his cannon will be blasting, and there will be guts soaring into the clouds. Bazooka Flow is an understatement to his own code name, sometimes, but all the time flexing after he hit his targets. Keep it cool with him. This time I will be talking about Bazooka Flow. Birth name Killian Zetkin Bagos. Superpower Armada, and it's a superpower of summoning munitions at any given time and using them correctly at any given time. Fighting techniques Krav Maga and Shika martial arts. He uses a Purgis, which is a portal cannon, um, a portal cannon that he designed that operates as a, an arm cannon and his version is something that he developed with his superpowers and that it will be explained later on in the characterization sheet he is of lawful good nature 35 years of age 7 foot tall 299 pounds he's an Israeli human from Tel Aviv Israel Europia Earth Zero Solar System 1 the Milky Way his occupation is a highly in class agent of purge, annihilation mission, and cleanup type. He's the captain of the Arxis battleship fleet. Birthday August the first. He's a cancer. A B negative blood. Homosexuality. Overall religion of good orderly, good orderly direction. If I can talk right, and purge united. His secrets. Love singing Amalu's Far Out. He sung it once after surviving Earth Zero when he was 17. Well, after saving Earth Zero. At that time, time cops were distributed to aid in keeping Earth Zero from being sliced in half. If it wasn't for Bazooka Flow aggressively fighting his father back during the epilogue of a battle, the power release he sent in the direction of the spaceship that, had, that held the captive sword of the universe wielder would have never happened and all heroes around would have been hard pressed to say the source of humanities, uh, humans. He is the only person that knows the release energy blast oddly collected a lot of the residual ether from the large battle of heroes versus villains on his way out of the planet's atmosphere. No matter how many investigations done around the battlefield of this specific one, there is nothing that can pinpoint bazooka flow or anyone in his area when he let go of the energy, uh, energy that would have put his father in the ICU. Mm -hmm. Right before he was about to strike his father down, he said, I no longer love you. You're not a part of my family. Those were the last words he said before he became partly mute. The last words he said before he killed 3,742 people by mistake. Bazooka Flow has a list of party towns he wants to oh this is a next secret sorry Bazooka Flow has a list of party towns he wants to hit in all of the dimensions he lives for this shit highly obsessed with them because he loves music festivals and dancing for hours on end out of the mighty long list he has escaped his normal routine to hit at least 50 percent of that list he takes a souvenir from each town he parties in now on to his physical description. Hair is dark blue. It's short. He does a slick phase look. But he also always wears a beret. So good luck on seeing his natural hair. Um his eyes are bright blue with blue rims. He's a he has a ripped wrestler type. When it comes to his build, very heavy weightish, uh skin tone is tan tumbleweed. weed. Physical condition fit like a titan and a ninja, equally built in strength and speed. And I know a lot of people in the world are so used to those big, tall, muscly characters being slow. He is not slow at all. He was uh, raised on a ninja type upbringing, so um, he is quite fast. 
and muscular. So be careful with that double-edged sword. And because of his superpower, he is rendered scar-proof. He has no tattoos to match that. His clothing, um, just regular clothes, not that big of a deal. Um, personality. His likes are Crisis, Omniverse, Blur, Allura, The Galactic Forces, Engineering, his rugby team, The Decapitators, uh, The Ebony Hot Tides, The Wishing Nigga Wood Pirateers, The Hydradian Order, The Black Eagle Order, The All Croft Organization, The Order of Justice, Peace, Strength, Partying, and Deep Piano. Dislikes Time Away from Crisis, and Degenerates. Fears, none really. Hobbies, swimming, rugby, uh, rugby, watching, playing rugby. Oh, wow, I butchered it. Swimming, rugby watching, playing rugby, solving puzzles, creating puzzles, power training, studying munitions, munitions experimenting, lifting rubble, drawing target practice, uh, drawing, then target practice, and binge watching comedies. Goals, keeping his marriage to crisis perfect. Occupation, Captain of the Arxis Battleship Fleet, Highly in Class Agent of Purge, Annihilation Mission and Cleanup Type, Captain of the Decapitators Rugby Club, Favorite Food, The Meats, Chocolate, Vodka, and Least Favorite Food, None Really, Most Prized Possession, The Patent to the Design by his version of the Purge Particle Cannon, Converting it into an Arm Cannon allows Bazooka Flow to use it as a bludgeoning weapon while launching rockets, missiles, and lasers at enemies on the battlefield. The design is 16 inches longer than his arm and uses a digital medium for his ammo cache. With him having Armada as a superpower, shrapnel never affects him. He will literally blow up someone dangerous at point blank and walk out of there with that handsome mug of his untouched. The water drowning of the super beings have to do to be a foe against him. It's ridiculous, but there he was on a mission, diddly daddling with the imagination of his. During an ill fated mission gone completely wrong seven years ago, when he first met Crisis, he had already absorbed an entire purge particle cannon to see if his superpowers can develop a new weapon. He has been sitting on different ideas, but eventually came up with the proper schematics he needed to perfectly, uh, to perfectly work with the straight particle cannon as an arm guard. In the clutch of moments leading up to him having to physically support Crisis, he made the necessary changes and sacrificed enough power to create the new model, then started blasting through their compound like he was the living 4th of July. Bazooka Flow created a new method of combat for Purge that was different from other kinds of armed cannons developed over the many millennia. This sent his net worth up to the millions, making him an asset to the company for his superpower engineering mind. Vernaculin has an incredibly deep and smooth Israeli accent. Very saucy. Aptitude, IQ equals 145, equally book smart and street smart. Mind is geared towards heroism, protection, annihilation, commanding strategy, and all things encompassing the battlefield. Has a keen memory that allows him to study diagrams and pinpoint measurements as if he can place himself in the terrain. He has no qualms with remembering mission details either. Psychological condition, just the right amount of sane and the right amount of crazy. Having an abusive father did do a number on him, but he has since been gotten over his father issues. Barely on speaking terms, but back when he was 22 years old, his father was doing too much, and if it was the first time Bazooka Flow fought, uh, and it was the first time Bazooka Flow fought dangerously enough to damage him immensely. Correcting that. It was crazy how they were in the middle of a super being brawl, and he couldn't take the abuse anymore. How his father would avoid residual environment damage against other heroes, but against his son, he would just let buildings collapse on him, throw villains in his direction without a warning, and other fun, harmless, laugh it off frantic of superheroes. Imagine how hard it is for a super being to get punched so hard that jaw dislocates. Just imagine. Character behavior strategic, smooth, dangerous, brave, collected, and mindful. Relationships crisis. Crisis is Bazooka Flo's husband, and they met on this mission. They both have been in the ranks of Purge for many years, and they didn't meet until maybe 27, 28, 29. And after they met, they were inseparable. <laughs> 
and they was all over each other in a matter of no time whatsoever. Just a short version, but moving right along. Um, <sighs> Social and other pressure problems, known really. Beliefs and morals, the laws of purge or status quo. Positive characteristics during downtimes, omissions, he would tell everyone to bring their firearms to him so he can cool them down and repair them if need be. Always on time. Always with the kills. Always with the retreats. Always with the back plans or backup plans for backup plans. Not into dying at any given time and incredibly smooth. Negative characteristics. Uh, whoo. Negative characteristics usually quiet. I was on a good run for one bit. <laughs> and now I'm fumbling all over the place. Let me fix this thing real quick. Alright, now back uh, to his background and current information. I made up um, Bazooka Flow because of um, Crisis, uh, Real Husband in Real Life. Um, I, I was in the army with uh, Vernon. And we were both 13 Deltas. Um, we was in Fort Stewart. He graduated basic training after I gra uh, graduated. And he was in the next unit. They assigned soldiers to my unit. And um, he has always been this down on Mars. Cool. Keep it light. Keep it fun. Kind of man. And I always appreciate, uh, appreciated it about him. And... It was always good vibes before people started using that word. And I love Vernon. He's been a great friend ever since 2004. So um, he was made into a character and his husband. In a little way, in a little bit, reminds me of Bazooka Flow. And, you know, I was trying to keep everything inclusive and make the different ethnicities balanced throughout the five categories that I have and um instead of making this husband white in the story I made him um Middle Eastern so that's how um Bazooka Flow came up and then eventually I found the face that I wanted for the character and did the mug I chose for him reminds me of Vernon's actual husband and that's how Bazooka Flow was created and I wanted somebody to um resemble nemesis from Marvel vs. Capcom 3 in a sense when it comes to fighting so that entire move set without the zombie stuff uh, with the cannon on the arm was the inspiration behind making Bazooka Flow and the birthplace already been over his family his mother's name is Nasali Aziri Neshdom 75 years old father is Kalgos Zejim Thagos 77 years old um and his whole history so sir bazooka flow started off as killian son of calgos who is also known as dole mighty a, a legendary intergalactic hero who is best known for his annihilation tactics birthed another legend to be killian showed promise yet showed defiance unfortunate for these two their division lied with killian's sexual orientation all of the love, protection, power, and trust he grew up with was thrown out the window when Killian came out. Then on, it was an awkward way of living between the two. Neither never get over it, uh, over each other's initial reactions. <clears throat> but his father's approval was never the same. He never felt the same high fives and his voice changed. Then his father started getting stricter when it came to his training sessions because he felt like his son would never be strong enough. They fooled around and got a bazooka flow to becoming just as powerful as his father, way ahead of time. He was making himself out of rage instead of discipline at times to prove his father. He was still a little mighty. Then he turned 15. He started arguing with his father about the smallest of tasks when it came to training his powers. Those arguments started leaving their training grounds, entering the battlefield even, and disrupting the last little piece they had at home. The junior hero's second half of his youth was spent in a very volatile mental space. He got extremely desolate one night, then up and disappeared for three weeks, somehow using contest to get to Edgemere, where he met Splashworth and Zeus for the first time. At the ages of 17, these three knuckleheads found a legendary treasure called the Red Triangles of Azequium. 
a collection of red transparent ruby triangles with a few few holes that have a cell of the sun in them. It always glows just enough so that anyone can be hypnotized by them. Yet, for many millennia, no one has been able to locate them, let alone see them. Splash Ruff grew up believing he could eventually find them. Oddly, sticking through this legendary treasure of the thousands he was told as a kid. He dove in deep since he was 12, trying to find those red damn triangles his grandmother used to tell him about. He journeyed his life to many elders that could tell him their version of events. When he heard all of their versions, he heard one five more times than the others, then, his, then decided to follow their version and ended up at the glitter in the river. Only can be found by traveling a specific way across the lands of Edgemere for three weeks. Bazooka Flo followed his new friends because he had left his old life behind. At that time, in his head, his mind was made up. These three, with Splash Ruff's trusty night detail, made the travels complete by the way that version went in at that time. They were amongst the only 300 eyes to ever see the glitter in the river. In the Terran Flow River, that flows around the northwest corner of Edgemere to the southeast as a spot in a groove at the south part of a mountain. That little gulf is where the glitter in the river sits and it appears that every molecule of the water is attached to a speck of glitter, making it look like a very hypnotic part of the river. The version said the legendary treasure is somewhere at the bottom part of the river through all of the glitter. Just their luck. While coming up okay. While coming up with the way to even try to swim in it, they had a super beam with x-ray vision, a super beam that can swim through anything, and a super beam that can enhance the vision capabilities of an Omar or Wilder. All they needed to do was sing a song together and keep singing it while Splash Worth is plugged into them via his outstanding bard abilities. It was amazing as Splash Worth couldn't see anything but light moving in a very unrealistic way while following the guidance of Bazooka Flow's eyes. Swam straight to where the open treasure chest was. Splash Worth switched around the current to remove everything from that chest and then Bazooka Flow saw it and told Splash Worth to grab in a specific direction and then he felt the whole chain of the red triangles of Azequium on his fingers. Waited for Bazooka Flow to guide him in the right direction then Hydro boosted out of the water so hard a huge globe of glitter followed the air as he emerged to some gymnastics then landed on his feet right in front of the fellas in the nights. The three of them in the nights looked at the pig sized red triangles with those three sunspots in the center of them. Let me grab something real quick. And then Splash Worth could finally break the curse on one of the elder uncles. A curse, is, a curse and inadvertently teaching Bazooka Flow he needs to go home and tend to his family duties of holding up the house of Thagos. The uncle only needed one pig. Each pick holds immense amounts of power that can make some wild dreams come true. Yet, it's something they don't know about, but the second Bazooka Flow realized he has to make plans to dimension hop back home. When Splash Worth told him to catch one of the triangles, Bazooka Flow turned around and saw his true power. As soon as he turned around the kitchen, at the height of his arc, it stopped to face Bazooka Flow while it was upside down and started spinning clockwise. After 10 seconds of spinning ever so slowly, it started spinning faster until it made a perfect circle. Then boom came in a huge yellow, orange, and red ray of light, giving Bazooka Flow an immense amount of power that made him fall to his knees as he quickly got confused and realized something was telling him to real realize his potential with how much experience was blessed on his spirit breed. The power that was blessed on his vessel was simply euphoric but alarming as he felt this very dangerous power leave from his eyeballs to all over his body in a very dense wave that was slower than molasses. Splash Worth's uncle told him that's exactly what he has to do to him with them having many in total. Zeus took one too. After Bazooka Flow blinked that gloriously dangerous red everyone only knows the adults of the House of Thagos can do. Yet he learned he doesn't have a voice while he is transformed into laser form. No worries. He waved goodbye to his friends and went home quickly. During those three weeks he was gone, a series of events went down, and Earth Zero was in uh, imminent danger. Mm -hmm. Dang, I need to go back to um, English, uh, English class, because I be forgetting how to structure sentences sometimes, but moving right along. 
uh, Earth Zero was in imminent danger to the point a whole school of elite heroes were on the planet defending it as fleets of Gundam's battle jets and battleships were battling it out above the ozone layer. Earth Zero had a huge zone of it. Visible from outer space, they showed nothing but extreme amounts of energy being released every other direction with explosion residue evaporating through the atmosphere. Instead of confronting his father, he went right into hero mode and jumped in a fray behind heroes across the skies until he got to his family. The Duke lasted for several more days as super beings were doing what they do best, surviving for eons on end trying to prove their vessel is the most powerful in the style of good versus evil. The dangers of the battlefield was making Bazooka flow anxious and gun crazy. He was running on new power, but was worried about dying before he gets to tell his father what he needs to. He did what he had to do so he could tell his father I no longer love you. You're not a part of my family. He finally got to him three days after returning home at a camp when both of them were commanded to take a replenishment break. Another public argument happened to the point a part of the camp was demolished and it was a good thing no other hero was within range as 25 feet in radius went up in the palm fire. The Almighty launched his son into the sky and quickly jetted to him where a fight commenced and Bazooka Flow unleashed his new laser form on his, on his pops then popped him steadily until he was on the ground below with his hands trying to defend his dome again. Bazooka Flow had the eye of the of death look with his ferocious vaporish blue energy lengthening out of his hand. After he said what he needed to say, he was going to damage his, his father so hard he would end up on life support. Now imagine how much force it need um is needed to harm a super being that's your father, where you got all of your glory from. Instead he let the energy go but their family feud didn't mess with the family dynamic as Bazooka Flow went into purge so he can practice heroism away from his father. Despite the bad blood with him, he's rather useful to the family, every last one of them. He'll pull rank at purge and get them what they need so they can better defend Earth in the future. After his hot-headed high school days, where the remainder of them were silent because he knew what he did, he finally got the mental therapy he needed to fix his life. It took him a couple of years to forget himself for causing an accident that actually saved Earth Zero. He vowed to himself to never be that destructive again. Training his abilities to be an annihilation hero was his saving grace, where he started being more vocal again. He climbed the ranks within Purge quickly, inadvertently working with Splashworth and Zeus again and again because of all of his ventures growing up. His shoe-in was very lethal for the side of heroism. To the point he became one of the few agents that was granted field operator un, um field operator un, <laughs> why am I missing it up? Field operator you uh Uno status where he would be doing solo missions or have command to build his own teams. All of that time was placing his name in the history books of Purge. Now his home um battleship arcs in its entire fleet. Bazooka Flow is the captain of the Arxis battleship, the strongest battleship made by the Hero Corporation. Via Purge, pulling together all of the wonderful minds they could many millennia ago. It's shaped like a drop bomb, the kind that drops from fighter planes. Its four wings have two wings themselves. Those wings have a thousands of high attained laser cannons on them. They shoot in a multitude of patterns, so they have a thousands of us. They have thousands upon thousands of strategies to take down enemy flights, uh, fleets. The Arxis itself is only bigger than the others because of the ornament that's on the needle of it. Meaning that all of the ships in the fleet are the same except for the captain fleet and it can only be identified by the hood ornament on the front of the ship. Um, it, it's a beacon that blinks every two seconds and can only be viewed by the radars of headquarters to make sure the mothership of the fleet isn't lost. Its other defenses lie with four grappler arms and a terror force field that has only been depleted in 1600 or so space battles. Um, somehow still finds a way to never be completely demolished. The ship has been remade a total of 14 times. It has deep indigo plating that is highly reflective and shows off the exact reflection of our spaceship, um, of outer space when it's in its dormant mode. It only switches the plates around when it's in the vicinity of other ships commanded to be shown by headquarters or during space battle so allies do not unnecessarily damage it. The Arxis is, a, is the largest size a spaceship can be the size of the moon. There are a total of 25 in fleet of the family ships of Arxis. 
possessions in his grand suite aboard battleship orcs he has a sapphire crystal piano he had custom made so he can sing and play the piano whenever he has downtime it's the thing that ties him most to his youth because he lost his innocence by killing a whole spaceship of innocence all the recitals he ever played and growing up are always strong in his memories fate capacity is 0.0000001 percent they are that strong long periods of not working he will make plans to play every piece he has ever played and end the last one of the sheet uh and in ended on the last one to be a song that Splash Rough Maverick of Voxius made up um because um all three of them are bards and all three of them sing professionally. Um he plays a song after his seventeenth year in life to keep all his youth where it needs to be solely in his memories. Crisis has been around where he was lucky enough to experience two of those long concerts. Usually pulls up with some liquor while reading dossiers the high importance or texting anyone who happens to be awake. Pits. Bazooka Flow has no pits. And abilities. Alright, you know. You know how the abilities are my favorite place to work on in the characterization uh characterization sheet. Got a real in and all of that amazing power. So, physical, Bazooka Flow is a solid, extremely tall super being of massive danger. He comes from an upbringing that knows exactly how to handle Armada as a superpower. It ranged from our long work out sessions to studying the energy outputs of all of mankind's energy weapons, where he learned at an early age how to, up, how to absorb residual energy from plasma cannons while they are blasting by simply placing his hand anywhere on glowing parts. Lessons of learning how powerful he has to be to touch high degree energy to recall mastery. He was being designed to be a golem like all of the House of Thagos. His martial arts are primarily Krav Maga and Shika, but dabbles in a huge plethora of everything minus these few, Apkito, Paigua, and Crab. His attributes are maxed out across the board in healthy ways that proves he has armada in his DNA slash RNA. Lastly, he has enough might to easily move five tons of weight by imbuing giant objects with his energy, energy so he can move it any way he deems fit. From launching to sliding to putting objects deeper in the ground, his might knows very limited bounds. Now his magical points. Projectile mastering. And I want you to try to be with me on this section because there are a lot of superpowers and I want them to be as realistically fiction as possible. So screw the human interaction and the human emotional spell. The superpowers and making sure everything is right with them is way more important and offers way more to fiction than interpersonal relationships between characters and trying to ruin everything with real life humanity. But moving right along, um, projectile mastery, energy wise, he can produce concentrated high energy in the form of sun balls. Because the superpower is literally man made munitions, he can't form projectiles like other superpowers. The orbs he makes have the general melting to set on fire. Uh, energy of his munitions explosives. He uses these when he wants to melt terrain. He changes their power levels depending on where he is. He knows how much force he has to put behind it whenever he is on a spaceship versus a ground bunker. Lastly, he can keep the balls at any position he wants, unlike his arsenal. Um, meaning that if he summons one of those balls over his hand, if he changes his position and let go of the ball, it'll stay right there, hovering in the air. Now, if he wants it to come with him, whatever he thinks will happen. So when he moves his hand to get into a different stance, the ball will stay over the palm of his hands. So things like that. Um, last, uh, with a long lifespan, when not used to melt anything, he uses these as beacons for any purge agent our hero on a mission with him so that's like um like I said he he can summon it and leave it in a place and it'll stay right there for a long period of time munitions mastery missiles rockets grenades mines cannons the bomb blade acid and lasers all of it on top of being to control them while in movement and then detonating whenever he pleases 
all of his munitions come of um in a form around him. Uh, actually, this that was wrong. All of his munitions come from around him. Uh, instead of them coming out of the hands, feet, mouth, eyes, and stuff like that, he has to build up energy and then summon them and they always come from different directions and they can come from any direction that he wants them so depending on his strategy that that day he might use a lot of um from behind the takes and with him being seven foot from behind he should have it covered right so he just be throwing them out there and he can also attach bombs, C4 stuff to people from a distance too. It's just it's just a matter of thinking it and then it comes up and they can be highly dangerous. So fighting against our motto where does is highly not recommended. So flight. Our motto where does come with disability. First it begins as levitate, then graduates easily into flight. Bazooka flow can fly in all directions. He can fly up to one hundred and fifteen miles per hour nowadays. Shrapnel and explosion protection. His DNA RNA makes it so that he can't be harmed by general munitions explosions. He knows what kind of charges will explode a lesser being. Those kind of blasts can gener generally be absorbed by himself. Due to extenuating circumstances of any super being, material randomly being around, he will not jeopardize under skin damage by duping his explosive powers. Otherwise, he's always deflecting and reflecting bullets whenever he's certain of a trajectory. Uh, trajectory uh, energy absorbed but general energy absorbed from residual ether usage energy pollution on battlefield battlefields absorbed direct attacks and absorbing concussion blasts of all kinds he has been known to bravely jump in front of giant energy attacks to take some of it away before it hits its target he will especially do that when innocents are evolved this energy is converted to life force or energy usage fuse bending all controlled by harness, harnessing on whether detonation pieces are within a munitions device. He can stop bombs from going off and stop fuses from being lit. Explosion manipulation. Further into munitions mastery, he can control explosions, powers, or lack thereof, turning any situation from regular power to nuclear and even gamma, giving him the ability to change the overall shape of the explosion and conf confine the explosion if need be. He has the ability to take... Uh, to making explosions so detrimental they, they can't even harm him. Recall mastery. In most cases he would keep his body fortified so that where he presses the trigger his body goes back to the exact spot. Because it is bazooka flow is often deemed as the sniper of a mission. In a lot of cases he'll be put on assassination attempts whether the target peaking, uh, can be resurrected or not. Even though he's big as all outdoors he would keep, uh, he would keep it stealthy and when he does what he does weapon engineering even though this is a natural ability the more a vessel knows the more stronger they can build weapons then manufacture them into fruition due to his family being powerful he grew up studying engineering architecture machinery weaponry and firearms so he can purposely help the heroes while on the battlefield he can enhance the proficiency of all munitions, machinery, and munitions ammo, adding 30% to all attributes of a weapon. When absorbing a weapon, he can uh, he has to harness it with his energy. He would then magically strip it down into energy from then to be able to absorb it and add it to his personal cash. Personal cash, uh, this is a very huge one. So this ability allows for an armado, uh, armada welder to build onto this dimensional hard arsenal. It acts like a manufacturing dimension and is the exp uh, explanation to why they can make huge beds of an arsenal out the um, pull. How they can pull huge beds of an ars arsenal out during a fight, launching up to 100 projectile uh, projectiles at once to one spot or an area. This is why Armada wielders are revered as highly dangerous. Because he's an imminent threat of a super being, his cache is quite large and only tends to run out of ammo in an extremely rare capacity. X-ray, night, and thermal vision. Our model wielders come with the special eye genes that get them this natural ability. There's no armada wielder without any of these abilities. 
then you have the transformation, the laser form. This is just as important as the personal cash ability. But, um, Bazooka Flow is very diligent and patient uh, dealing with the super being's um, powers. He knows that his bloodline doesn't have the Matism edition of the superpower, but he has access to an ability Matism withers can't acquire. Turning his entire flesh into a movable laser allows him to be the annihilation hero that he is. Machinery doesn't stand a chance against him, and they are his favorite enemies to dismantle. While in laser form, he appears solid red, but with the black lines extending important folds in his form and current clothing. He, ga uh, he gains the ability of flight, um, so he will be doubled. Um, phasing, uh, phasing in and out of material, doesn't have to breathe, can form his extremities into slashing weapons, gains a heightened version of thermal vision, gains a heightened version of x-ray vision, and... and can turn his entire vessel into volatile energy. Unfortunate for him, he can't access any munitions other than plasma or laser energy. It gets worse though, in this portion of the spirit grid, he cannot talk while in laser form, and the form disrupts radio waves of all variants, making it damn near impossible for him to communicate if a cyber weather is in their range. He has been able to hone in the disrupting energy of his laser form so that communication isn't fucked up for anyone else but his vessel. He can fortunately hear, but he can't make verbal sounds himself until he unlocks the ability. Yet, you can count on him to protect the innocents all around the stars. Here is weaknesses. It's a rarity when Armada Wilders will come across their weaknesses, uh, which are powers that can summon portals. All covens around the galaxies have built nifty, safe proof uh, that keeps Armada Wilders from completely blowing up everything, especially on spaceships, colonies, and stations. Meaning, Heaven, Hell, Dream, and Portal Wilders would do what they have to do to keep any munitions from landing in their premises as well as cyber wielders being able to hack their mainframe of weaponry coding depending on the armada wielder cyber wielders will have their work cut out for them in a lot of cases cyber wielders will deter projectiles from hitting their mark lastly armada and explosion type wielders will cancel each other out to the point that damage will be based off of how powerful the concussion blasts are of their explosives so that was the whole sweetness of bazooka flow and when you look at the image you'll be able to see that uh bazooka flow has moved cause this is um all of the helper characters that were not in the first image they got a key around their neck and now everything is together way it should be so it'll be easier for me to keep tabs of things so sorry for you for looking up. He down at the bottom now with um he's on a roll with a bunch of militant law enforcement people in a story. Like Clear Soldier is um a soldier. Uh Nexon is a galactic officer. Decimitis is a police commissioner. Viker is an agent of a militia. And Promesis is a Gundam pilot for an army. Or for a fleet. But I really enjoy making bazooka flow. <laughs> um, when I was making up all of the characters in the beginning, um, I just know that I wanted there to be at least five purge agents, and then I made up that whole secondary roster and failed to make up five purge agents. So that's why the third roster came, and it was almost um, sixty characters again on the second roster, just to make sure I was covering the basis of you know allies around the galaxies and things like that. And Bazooka Flow was the fourth member of Purge I made up. And he's Christ's husband. And he's considered a very valuable piece um, to Purge because of Crisis. And when I get to Crisis characterization sheet, you'll understand a little bit more about Purge. I'll let you later. And don't forget. TPB, he can get it in, just so it depends so he can swallow all this sin. Tell a friend.